you know, we start out in New York. We've seen right. the, the the many cycles. Were you? And, oh wait, you were from Brooklyn too, or I was from Brooklyn. Yep, uh, I'm a year older than you. Where in Brooklyn? Uh, Flatbush Avenue, right near Prospect Park. That is hilarious. Yeah, it was. Uh, uh, interesting. So we've seen a lot. What did your parents do? Um, my dad uh, was a truck driver. My mom was a homemaker. I was uh, first generation. Are they still alive? Or? My mom lives a mile away from me. And my dad, unfortunately, passed oh. about uh, 15 years ago. Sorry about that. He must have been so proud to see you like go from Brooklyn to the boardroom. Yeah, oh, my Lord. It, it, um, what does it, mom think of all this? She must be thrilled. Mom's proud. And, and you know, you and I share, I think, this too, is like, I wish we as a as society would focus more on education because I went from the bottom 10% yep. to the top 1% because we don't have a fixed caste system, right? right? It's because you get an education. I tell my three teenage uh, boys that they could take your job, they can't take your education and don't ever let them take your self-worth, right? Right. And so education, work hard and luck, you could change your lot in life in, in this uh, country. And we have all this discourse and this polarizing um, uh, sense where we used to be, um, you know, we used to be uh, common ground called Americans now like we're more entrenched so in these... tribal and it's so weird that when you and I came up the 80s 90s 2000s when we sort of got into our careers oh my god I just had flashbacks and exactly. acid wash jeans and, exactly. um, well, yeah yeah all this great stuff but even still despite the the fashion mistakes it, there was this hope and dream that you could go from the bottom 10% to the top Horatio Alger, right? Yeah, I mean, you, you could just do the work. And back then, it was so hard to find the information. When we were coming out there, you know, the internet was just coming online. It's called microfiche, go to the library. Go to the microfiche, go to the library. And we had to go search for information. You wanted to find a term sheet. You wanted to find out how venture capital worked. There was no information. It was books. Maybe you find a magazine article. Asymmetric there. information allowed yes. for a semi-fixed cast system with the flow of information on the internet. Yes. Everyone has the same opportunity and possibility yes. to self-learn, to figure it out. And I think it unlocks and it levels the playing field that I think is great. And if you look at, and a lot of people have written about this, but if you look at the number of immigrants that are running some of the iconic companies of our generation mm -hmm. and my kids' generation, it's unbelievable. And that's the... Sundar, of America. Satya, Elon, I mean, these are all immigrants. Right. They didn't oh, come. We, uh, uh, Pierre Aminadar, right? Yeah. Like, it, it's amazing. And so we should Shikari, celebrate. You know, adopted son of, a, of an immigrant. Right. right. We should celebrate that America is still a melting pot where we take the best of every culture yes. and you have a level playing yes. field. But if we want to continue to be competitive on a global basis, we need to invest in education. If you look at the debates on both sides of the aisle, did you hear anything about education no. except for the forgiveness of uh, student loans, which right. is a financial decision largely, right. and they're not talking about making sure our public um, uh, education system is robust, right. that it's self-learning, it's using technology, that we're um, not just locked in a tenure system, but we're rising up the teachers who are, are, are the best and the brightest, and that we're respecting and rewarding the teachers and more than we are the people who happen to have a really cool YouTube video. And so I think as a society, we should be talking more about education if we want to remain competitive.